try new things, things that I was scared of, made me realize that we are all so much stronger than we give ourselves credit for. Everyone sends big hugs and, you know, and, and congratulations to you from USD. How are you feeling right now? Uh, a lot of emotions. Uh, I'm excited for the team. I'm proud. I'm humbled. I, it's overall great to be part of an organization like NASA that is really striving to push the limits of, of our, human, our human bonds, pushing space exploration, trying to learn more about our world. So it's a, it's a great time to be alive. You know, one of your professors, Professor Diane Hoffes, remembers you fondly. Um, and she wanted me to say hi to you. Uh, do you have any memories of uh, any of your professors here, whether it be Diane or, or any other memories of your time at USD? Oh, my gosh. I remember, I remember all my professors. I remember Diane Hoffes quite well. I remember spending many hours in office hours just going through a lot of complex math problems, uh, just really good memories, and uh, kind of forming the foundation of my academic career and learning how to learn and how to approach problems is something I really got from the University of San Diego. What do you think about the impact of higher education and where it has taken you? I wouldn't be where I am with, without higher education. You know, I, I learned so many skills from the military, a lot of hard skills, but just as important, I learned a lot of soft skills. I learned how to communicate. I learned how to appreciate other perspectives and how to see sides certainly if they were not in agreement with my own learning the scientific method and that could be applied to really any problem in life letting the evidence show you the answer being having the humility to accept that you might be wrong those are principles in academia but they're also principles to just being a good human being you know, you and Matthew have a special connection, being both from, you know, having graduated from the University of San Diego. How did, did that help you at the beginning uh, connect as teammates? I had a connection that's even deeper than our alma mater. We both have, uh, we share a mutual friend. Um, his name was Mike Tatham. He was actually a Navy SEAL. And so Mike Tatham was my classmate in SEAL training. And uh, Mike Tatham also went to USD at the same time that Matt did. And they were crewmates on a rowing team together. Uh, Mike Tatham, unfortunately, has passed away. Uh, but that was kind of our link to each other. So, uh, you know, Matt Dominic is a, is a great astronaut. He's a great friend. And uh, we're both really proud that we came from USD. How do you stay uh, grounded? So many things are going on in your life, professionally, and I'm sure personally. And how do you keep your feet on the ground and your head in the game uh, in, in such a time? I, I think, so that's a, that's a really profound question. I think that can apply to any phase of life. It can apply certainly when you're trying to get a degree at a university or you're trying to acquire a job or learn a new skill or go through parenting or, or anything. Um, I think it's so important that you understand that any goal can be divided up into small steps. You know, we, we talk about large leaps at NASA metaphorically, but all, all small steps lead to large leaps. And so I think when you take a large goal to stay grounded, to kind of keep your eye on the prize is you, re you remember what inspires you, what is driving you towards your goal. And it's, very human to forget that along the way and we need to remind ourselves of those of that inspiration of those goals but we also need to take those large goals and chunk them into smaller steps and i think that you know can be anywhere from if you're trying to do really well at the university of san diego you're focusing on today and tomorrow making sure you're going to do well in the next test what advice do you have for people who don't have the courage or this, uh, the confidence to dream the big dreams? It's a great question, and it's one that's very personal to me. So the answer, there's a lot of answers. 
I think one of the important ones is to step outside of your comfort zone. And what does that mean? It means doing something that you may not be comfortable with, that you, that's not safe for you. You know, I am a first generation um, uh, Korean American. My parents were immigrants. I didn't also have a lot of confidence growing up and being an astronaut is certainly something that I never thought I could do or be a doctor, but getting outside of my comfort zone and doing things different, just trying new things, things that I was scared of made me realize that we are all so much stronger than we give ourselves credit for. And whatever we think our limits are, they're 10 times more. And I was fortunate to have a lot of military training teach me these values, but I also learned it in medical school. I learned it at the University of San Diego, which is one of the hardest transitions of my life, going from kind of a military setting to a very civilian setting, learning that our limits are so much further than we give ourselves credit for, and stepping outside of our comfort zone. You combine those two, and you will be amazed at the results you're able to achieve and how strong you really are. And I know that we're running out of time, but I just wanted to ask you, was there anything other than, uh, you know, that you enjoyed a lot at USC other than going through, through your math classes? Were there any other classes that you took that really excited you or things that you did? You know, yeah, really. Uh, so as part of the NROTC there on campus, I, I worked for the school as well. I gave out parking tickets. I have a lot of fond memories of uh, the University of San Diego, everything from math classes, and I was also doing pre-med, so I was seeing a lot of chem and biochem, and a lot of fond memories of just spending hours just working through problems. But uh, I think what I remember from USD, you know, as much as I love the math and, and the science classes, I remember the people, and I remember the experiences. At the end of the day, interpersonal relationships, it's the legacy we leave behind. And the lessons and the relationships I gained from the University of San Diego, from having teachers like Dr. Diane Hoffis, the, the, those are the important elements of legacy that have stayed with me and I know stay with all the other students who go through undergraduate school. So that's what I remember. That's what I take with me is those lessons learned and the relationships I've gained along my path. In my last question, I promise everybody wants me to ask, you've been a Navy SEAL, you're a doctor, you're an astronaut, like what is next for you? What are your limits if you have any? What is your next goal? So this is, I think, a really important question and I want to, it's important because I think it's, I want people to know that I have never, it's never been important for me to chase a title or chase that dream job. What's been important for me is always following my heart and letting my passions take me to the next step. And so I've never had more than one goal planned out. You know, when I wanted to join the Navy and become a SEAL, I did not plan to be a doctor. And when I was trying to be a physician, I did not plan to go to NASA to be an astronaut. So to answer your question, I have no plans after this. But I do know that whatever it is, it's going to be a path of service because I find that to be sustainable and I get a, sense of, a level of satisfaction I can't get anywhere else. And I implore other people who may be in a position where they don't know what they wanna do next is to look inside and let their passion speak to them on what they wanna do, how they wanna impact their world. Johnny, anything else that we left out that, that you feel is important to, to say here to, to your Terreros and your family here? Uh, no. I. I miss San Diego and go Toreros.